Hello and welcome to Might and Magic World of Zine. So, this is another RPG in the Might and Magic series. It is, in fact, the second and uh, you could say it's the last game of the uh, second generation of Might and Magic games. It's based on the Might and Magic 3 engine. So, not too many changes here that I will have to cover. So, to start off the game, as usual, what I want to do at the beginning of all games is to actually go over the storyline of it. This is a direct sequel, but you will only get the tie-ins kind of latish to the game. So, let's begin with watching me read the uh, manual. <laughs> So this is very interesting and very fitting for the very beginning. The Legend of the Unification Many centuries ago, the Ancients created Zine and a thousand worlds like her. The Ancients scattered these worlds like seeds among the stars, spreading their people across the universe. Though the depth of variety among these worlds was astonishing, each one had a common goal to reach and orbit its chosen star and achieve its full destiny. This process is called the Unification. Each of these worlds has its own guardian to watch over it and ensure the fulfillment of that world's destiny. The journey of a world through the jungle of stars is both complex and dangerous, and a world without a guardian is a world without defenses. When the time is right and the moons are aligned, the Guardian of Zine will send messengers throughout both lands to announce the coming unification. The Guardian will open the pyramids to travelers who wish to journey from one side of the world to the other. The peoples of Zine, long separated from one another by the impenetrable barriers of the natural world, will at last begin to meet and trade. Preparations for the upcoming unification will be made, and the people will feast and dance with joy. The Guardian will honor some with the chance to awaken the four slumbering servants for the ceremony. And there is one servant of fire, one of air, one of water, and one of earth. The rulers of the two sides of Zine will send ambassadors to each other's course for the first time ever. When the time is right, Darkstone Tower will be opened, and the seal to its cloud breached. There, in a beautiful ceremony, the observatory atop the cloud, the rulers will lay the scepter and the cube upon the altar of joining. A great magic shall take hold of Zine then, and with much noise and light the two sides will join together as one, and never the twain shall split. So that was the manual entry for World of Zine. But let's cover Clouds of Zine. I won't be covering uh, Dark Side of Zine just yet, but don't misunderstand me. I will go through the game as one, World of Zine. I just won't cover the Dark Side of Zine part until we actually get to the Dark Side, which will take some time, because it's a higher difficulty area. So, Clouds of Zine. The, the Sixth Mirror. You and a small circle of friends have gathered at a local tavern in Vertigo to discuss the events of the last several months. Your conversation bobs and weaves among the subjects in between draws of ale. The central topic is the vivid recurrent dreams you all shared starting eight months ago. The first dream arrived as a nightmare, frightening in its clarity and intensity. You all dreamt that you were listening to King Burlock's advisor, Crodo, speak to you. It was as though he was talking from a great distance, and the message seemed to have been addressed to someone else. This message is not a dream. I am sorry to trouble your sleep in this manner, but I have no other way to communicate with you. A few months ago, a man claiming to be King Burlock's lost brother, Roland, arrived in court and announced himself to the king. Roland had left on a mission into Mount Firestone many years ago, looking for the passage to the fabled land below the land. 
that Roland should return home after all these years was a very good news for the king, but I had my reservations. Where had he been all this time, and why hadn't he come home sooner? Suspicious of him from the first, I watched him tell tales of ancient treasures and works of power. The artifact that Roland talked most about was the Sixth Mirror. The Sixth Mirror was the only magic mirror that was made to be portable, and because of this it had no name. The owner of the mirror was able to step through it just like the other five mirrors, but he could take this one with him. Uh, interjection here, um, just as some context. Uh, the mirrors that he's talking about is pretty much the same as the portals and towns in Mind Magic 3 Hours of Terror. And the Sith mirror does sound quite a bit as the interspatial transport box that we received at the very end of the game. So that's very interesting. Alright, continuing. That Roland was obsessed with the mirror became increasingly clear with time, but the king did not seem to notice. Rather, King Burlock began to finance expeditions to find the lost mirror. Many brave and powerful adventurers answered the call, but none succeeded. In spite of repeated failures, Roland urged the king to continue the search. As the search grew more feverish, King Burlock began to neglect his management of the realm. The king's health deteriorated, the servants grew lax in their duties and the treasury ran dangerously low. I felt that I had to do something, and do it soon. I resolved to sleep on it and speak to the king in the morning. That very night I awoke to the chill kiss of dark magic being worked nearby. Rising to my feet, I gathered my robe about me and quietly walked into the hallway. From there, I was able to hear muffled sounds coming from Roland's room. Cautiously, I crept up to Roland's room and looked through the keyhole. To my horror, I saw Roland sitting cross-legged, holding a black tome in one hand. From a charcoal diagram in, on the floor arose the image of a foul spirit in the shape of a knight with horns cresting his helm. Roland was conversing with it in a harsh tongue that I did not recognize. I must have made us some sound then. For Roland abruptly turned and stared hard at the door. I backed away from the keyhole immediately, and it is well that I did, for the door suddenly blew off its hinges and slammed against the, oppo the opposite wall. Fearing for my life, I ran. I ran as fast as my old bones would take me, ran as though the forces of hell were at my heels. They were. As I rounded the first corner of the hallway, screaming for help, the chill blast of Roland's winter magic narrowly missed me. We ran through the twisting halls of Burlock's castle, through rooms dusty with disuse and through armories filmed with rusting war tools. I took a turn and found myself cornered at the end of a hallway with no means of escape. In despair, I turned to face Roland and raised my magical defenses, knowing that he was stronger than I. Roland came charging around the corner and slowed down when he saw that I was cornered. Raising his hands above his head in preparation for a sorcerer's strike, Roland smiled and said, What is the matter, Crono? Are you afraid of what you saw? Roland continued to approach me slowly. Feeble old man, your fear of magic you don't understand is discredit to our profession. I understand your evil magic well, Roland, I said hopelessly, slumping my shoulders and bowing my head. I can't hope to win against such strength. With that I sighed, gathering my energies for one good blast. I looked up at Roland, who was still smiling and advancing, sighed again, and threw my spell. The force of the dancing blade spell flying from me pushed me back against the wall. Caught off guard, Roland failed to deflect the spell. The blades flew out of my hands, stripping the flesh from his body. Hope rose within me when I saw what I had done to him, then despair when he still stood after the attack. Scraps of flesh clung to his grinning skull, 
and his one remaining eye glared at me. I knew then that Roland was undead, and that I could not defeat him. Who are you? I gasped, staring at the figure before me. Lord Zine, the monster said. Call me Lord Zine, King of the World, for that is what I shall be in a very short time. King Burlock, I began. We'll do as he is told, Zine finished for me. Especially if he doesn't have you around to give him bad advice. There was nothing more to be said. Zine made a peculiar gesture with his right hand and then clenched his fist. I felt this pressure on my defenses and on my head, which quickly grew intolerable. The blackness took me, and I knew no more. When I awoke, I found myself in a tower on an island, surrounded by water. From my window, I am able to see King Burlock's castle across the water. Every day I see a search party is leaving the castle to look for the mirror and wonder if the king knows what Roland is, or where I am. There's only one place in the world with a view like I have, and that is Baron Darzog Tower. Because of the materials used to construct the room I am in, I am unable to use my magic to escape. The only thing I can do is try to send these dreams to you in hopes that you will hear and respond. I don't know what Lord Zine wants the mirror for, but it can be good. I fear the ruin of the realm if he succeeds. You are the only people in the world with the power and resources to make a weapon capable of slaying Lord Zine, and your laboratory is in Newcastle. You must make haste. If Lord Zine discovers what you are doing, he will destroy you. With that, the dream ends. This dream had been repeated several times for about two months, then never again. The day after you had your last dream, Newcastle was destroyed by a bolt from the sky, and all its inhabitants were killed. Each one of you realized that you may be the only person left alive who received the message. If you didn't do anything, nobody would. So you quit your jobs and traveled to Vertigo with your life savings. Here, you were able to find training in spells and weapons, and here you met one another. You talk late into the night, excitement and nervousness in your voices. As the conversation winds down, you all are getting ready to retire for the night. You agree that tomorrow is the day you will start your adventures. So that was the beginning for Clouds of Zine. And now, tying into that, you do need to read the uh, manual before you read the intro. Well, watch the intro. Uh, yeah. This ties in very nicely into what you could see here. It's pretty much a uh, summary of that. So, let's view the Clouds of Zine intro. I am Crodo, overseer of the land known as Zine. Many years have passed since the glory days of King Burlock. I am the king. When times were good and there was much rejoicing. Yay! But now, imprisoned in this enchanted tower by the sinister, self-proclaimed Lord Zine. <laughs> I'm unable to help you in these dark times. It is now up to you, adventurers, to right what has been wronged. <laughs> Uh, 
And that sums up the introduction for Mind Magic Clouds of Zine. And as such, also the Mind Magic World of Zine. So, let's actually start a new game. And yes, select anything. And uh, yeah, as previous, let's call it. Let's play. Now, this is interesting. Um, you get to select game preference, either adventure or warrior. This is, in fact, a uh, difficulty selection. If you choose adventure, it's lower difficulty. If you choose warrior, it's higher difficulty. Uh, now, this game I haven't even played at all myself, uh, unlike my Magic 3 Hours of Terror. Um, and I did actually watch a playthrough of it, and that's it. So this will be a semi-blind run. So because of that, and since you cannot actually change the game preference during the game itself, I am going to choose Adventure difficulty. Creating files, and we have arrived on the Clouds of Zine, or the light side of Zine, I would say. Because actually Clouds of Zine is an area on the light side of Zine. And this, if you look into the... Uh... Not really? Um... There's no... Uh... No Corex notes? Huh. But, well, you can see that this is Vertigo. This is indeed the town that uh, they were talking about in the manual. And we are right outside Lady Geraldine's Tavern. Now, unlike in Might and Magic 3, Alice of Terra, the default party doesn't actually do anything, they don't have a plot relevance. So I feel even uh, better about replacing all of these people with custom party. And yeah, as usual, I need to give everything to one person so that all of these items don't just get lost. And uh, you can see that in World of Scene, uh, you now have tabs for items. Now I have no idea what that entails whether this means that uh, that you can carry more items than in Mind Magic 3 or not. Probably not. Well, actually, it's probably one page. Yeah, because there's no up and down arrows. Yeah, so it's one page for each item type. Okay, that makes sense. Uh, so, that means in total we have four times as much inventory space. Well, actually, wait, two... Yeah, it's twice as many inventory slots, but it's categorized. Okay, that's good to know. Uh, so, I can't give these to that guy, so I'll just have to do this. Uh, wait, that's armor, accessories, give this to him, and give these, and give these. Okay, so some of these things that you'd think are accessories are actually considered armor. Oh well. Okay, so let's go here. Hello, travelers. This is the tavern, where of course we can create a new Goodbye. party. So let's do just that. Now, interestingly enough, the music that plays here is actually um, the intro, I believe, of uh, um, Clouds of Zine itself. It's a strange choice, but I guess since they didn't have any place to put the uh, menu music for Clouds of Zine, since the main menu uses the dark side of Zine music, they just 
thought it would be best to put it here. <laughs> okay, so, let's delete the characters that we don't need. Like this guy... Uh, this person, then that person, and that person. We need the rest for items. And let's create our first few characters. Um, yeah, so first, what I want to create is this, and I need good stats, of course. Uh, that's not bad. It's good to have higher or lower stat in case you get a negative uh, status ailment. But I don't think I want... Well, I, yeah, I want at least 19 as the highest stat. This is not bad, yeah. And uh, all the stats are fairly decent, but there's only one good stat. So I think this will be okay for a knight. If I put this to might and to endurance, I'll put this. And then... Um, I don't need intellect or personality, so put this here, put this there, and 15, 14, 14. Yeah, this is fairly okay. So let's put a knight and create. This will be the Captain James T. Kirk. Actually, wait. Uh, right, wait, no. I don't want him to be a knight, I actually want him to be a barbarian. Yeah, that's right, and... Oh, uh, uh, yes, yeah, still, I'll leave everything as is. Yes. So, Kirk, a barbarian, <laughs> yes. <laughs> because he did like brawling a lot. So, um, next up... I want to create this person, and let's see, uh, no, I want better stats than that. Um, that's decent, but I think I can get better. Yeah, that is actually pretty good. Okay, so you get maximum intellect, uh, minimum personality. Then, uh, what else is important? Luck is very important. So 17 at luck is good. Might is not very important. Endurance is very important. So switch these around. Then speed and accuracy. They're more important than might. Yeah, so let's do this. Okay. And you get to be a sorcerer. And of course, this is our science officer, Commander Spock. Elves are pretty good at being sorcerers, so that's my choice. Then, I want to create someone else, but um, the person that I want to use the uh, icon for him is already taken, so first I need to add these guys. Right, so we have Kirk and Spock. Let's have them take all the items from these people. Take, 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 take. And take all the armor. Then we'll be able to delete them. Right, right, right. Nobody has anything in miscellaneous. Too bad. Oh wow, we are actually full of armor. For both people, interesting. Right. Right, and accessories. Uh, 
There. Let's ignore that guy. And just once again go here. Hello, travelers. Goodbye. <laughs> Hello, goodbye. Yeah, we don't really need food or anything else right now. Right, so remove this person and this person. Oh. No, uh Delete this person, yes. And delete that person. Good. Now, create. Yes, this portrait. And uh, the stats are pretty bad, so let's re roll them. Uh, okay ish, but I think I can get better. Oh, that's. No low stats. That's pretty good, but no high stats either. That's pretty bad. That's pretty bad. 17? Not bad, but two low stats. And everything else is fairly bad, too. Oh, this is actually decent. Mm. Is it decent enough? The question is. I think I can reroll several more times. Oh, wow, this is really nice, yes. Alright, so I want to put this into luck, I think. 18 to luck, 16 to um, either endurance or might, I think. Let's put it into endurance. Uh, speed is important too. Let's put this into speed. Uh, let's put 12 into per personality. Yeah. So 18, 16, 13, 13, 12. Let's trade these around. Yeah, okay, so let's put this into robber. And this will be the Chief Engineer Commander Montgomery Scott. AKA Scotty. Well, let's use the official name right here. Next. I want to use. Uh, this portrait and uh, stats. Um, oh, 19. That's not bad. But I need better minimums. Oh, wow. 21. That is amazing. Okay, I will keep this definitely. So, 7 goes into personality. No, wait. Other way around. 7 goes into intellect. Personality of 21, and then I want probably endurance, luck and speed. Mm, oh yeah, that's good. Yes, and you can be a cleric. He will be our doctor, Commander Leonard McCoy. Except, in this game, you cannot actually actually write McCoy correctly. Could do that, but that's silly, so I'll just use his nickname. Bones. Right, next. Uh, the two slots that we had voting for. It ended up with ties, so the one person that was most voted was Pavel Chekhov. The uh, security chief and a lieutenant. And there is a fairly well fitting uh, profile image for him, even though it doesn't really match the race correctly, but oh well. Um, and the stats, these are decent, but I think I can get better. Oh wow, this is pretty good, but I really don't need. Uh, everything to be that good. I'd rather get something better at uh, the higher end of the stats. 19... Yeah, that's actually pretty good. Uh, but I want to make him into... a knight, yes. So that means maximum might and uh, 
I don't need intellect or personality, so they can be that. Then endurance, speed, accuracy, and luck. How do I want to put these? I do need a lot of endurance. A lot of speed would be good too, actually. I think I have I'll have 19 speed, 17 endurance. And yeah, that will be fairly okay. And you get to be a knight. So chuck off. Yes. And last but not least, hopefully, um, the person that I had to tie break was actually um, a tie between Sarek or Sulu. And given that there is really no good portrait for Sulu, I had to go with Sarek. And. Uh, yeah, so this will be the icon for him. It's quite fitting, really. He's, of course, the ambassador from Vulcan. And uh, the stats... Oh, 19. That's not bad, but that's a lot of bad stats here. Uh, that's much better. Uh, but still, I want to reroll something a bit better, I think. Like this. But no, that's bad on the lower side of things. No, no. Come on, give me some better stats. Ah, 19. Wow, yeah, that's actually very good. Alright, so, the lowest thing is accuracy. You don't need intellect. Because I want you to be a... Uh, a paladin. Thing is, elves are actually pretty poor paladins. But for an ambassador, a paladin is actually a fairly good fit. More so than a knight, I guess. Okay, so, you get 15 personality, and... Uh, yeah, I won't be able to make you a paladin unless I have higher personality, so you can get that. And I want pretty good endurance, okay speed, well I guess I need luck the least in this case. Might 15, endurance 19, need more speed, 13 accuracy, could be better, but oh well. Yet to be a paladin, and yes, so as I said, he is Sarek. Right, so that covers our initial party creation. Let's add all of these people into our party. And then also reorder them. I want my knight and barbarian to be in the very beginning of our party. So that fits very nicely. Kirk is in the lead. And then... Um, our knight is Chekhov, he can be in the front too. Uh, then the paladin and the robber, and then the sorcerer needs to be at the very end. Alright, so that's the thing. And since I am just at the end of the time, I will stop the recording here. And I will see you all next time! once we actually start uh, adventuring for real. So see you all then, later.